Oh, what a bite. What a bite. Holy smokes. Look how clear that water is. I had no idea that water's that clear. Yes. <laughs> awesome bite. Hey guys, welcome back to Project D. We're out here, one of my favorite things, top water fishing with a popper. I'm gonna just try to break it down. You know, we got a lot of top water, top water baits out there that, to choose from. And you know, I kind of struggle times when to throw one over the other. And this one right here, you know, a popper bait, I'm gonna try to break it down and tell you when I use this. And hopefully we're gonna catch a bunch of fish like that today. What an awesome bass. Thanks, buddy. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Thanks, bud. You got me all wet. This is what I'm talking about, a popper. You know, something that has this concave lip. Usually they have a, a little bit of, of uh, uh, feathers back in the back. But you know, when do you use this over say a walking bait or a buzz bait or so many other options? Let's just start off by saying, I use this when I am targeting a specific piece of structure. You know, here it's, it's isolated cattail clumps or maybe it may be a stump the back corner of a dock, bluegill beds. Um, I'm gonna work this bait in a short amount of time, most of the time, reel it in, cast it another target. That's one of the beauties of this bait. It has a lot of drawing action to it because it has a very unique sound, a very deep sound that'll bring fish to it. Like something's on there. I don't know what it is, but something's on there. Well, that's what we're trying to imitate. Pretty good example. I think my bait and that bait look a lot alike. Got a really light belly, green on the sides, green back. Got the black little fin, the black little fin. A little bit of blue, a little bit of blue. Does it get much better than that? Feels like a nice one. I'm in the grass. What do I got? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that water's clear. That water's so clear. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. That's so awesome catching on the top water. Nothing better. Nothing, nothing, nothing better. I never saw him come get it. He just sucked it under. Wow. I mean, I never even saw the water move and I'm like trying to pop my bait and there's a fish on it. Man, this looks awesome to me right here. I mean, you just got isolated reed patches right out in the middle of this big bay. I don't know, if I was a bass, I guarantee you, I could live right there. I got 20 foot of water right out here to slide up there, eat me a, eat me a bluegill popper, just like that one right there. That's what, that's what I would be doing if I was a bass. I'd, I'd get caught a lot though if I was a bass, I guarantee it. I'd have hook holes all around my mouth. If I got released, I might have the sides flayed off of me too. You watch, I'm probably gonna catch a big old pike or musky. They gotta be in this lake too. That's a pike, gosh dang it. He jumped a foot out of the water. I knew it was coming. I knew it was fixing to happen. I just want my bait back, buddy. These things are so slimy. I'm so glad we don't have these in Oklahoma. I know, I know people enjoy catching them. I'm not one of them. biggest reason is they stink so bad. You know, for me, I kind of think of a popper as, as a bait that, like a frog, you know, you throw a frog just in, in a lot of times open water frog fishing or, you know, around a certain cover, you're just working it for three or four feet. I'm not talking about mat fishing a frog, but you know, just when you're throwing it around, you know, smaller areas, you're just throwing that frog in a, in a short strike zone. That's where I throw a popper, say over a walking you know, style bait. So uh, um, 
that's kind of how I differentiate it. Also, I'll throw a popper when I got a little bit of chop on the water like I got this morning. I broke it off. It was where that pike, I just, I, I felt that line afterwards. I just didn't feel it good enough, but it's clean as can be. It's that pike, that's one thing about them. They will cut you off. Look at it, it's an inch above the bait. Perfectly, like just one inch right above the bait. <laughs> that's, that'd been where that pike ate it. One thing that I think is really unique about, you know, a popping bait is they're really pretty versatile. Um, I love just making those things go bloop, bloop, and it just makes that big bubble of, of air in front of it. It's just a really unique sound that I think has a lot of drawing power. But then there's times that I just want to walk it. I don't want to make that, that blooping noise. I just want to walk it right there, keep it in a small area. Uh, it's very versatile in the different ways that you can work it. That's a gosh almighty, that was a big one. That was a bass, it hit like a pike. Holy smokes. So I was alternating between my bloop and the walking and that bit, that bass bit on a bloop. Bait's messed up. Heck of it. That was a good one. Got so excited I threw it out there with the hooks all tangled up. So I've made a modification in my, in my popper. You know, you hear me talk a lot about throwing your top waters on braid, you know, having braid on your reel. You hear me talk about having a monofilament leader because it floats. Okay, not always true. I modified this. I started off with a monofilament leader. I like a monofilament leader if I want to make that bait walk. Thus, the, the, the line is up, it's laying on top of the water, makes it really easy to walk. Well, I noticed, man, I had a really big one back there, uh, bust it. And, and, and I was blooping it. You know, I was making the bait go bloop, bloop. Well, that's when I want a fluorocarbon leader because now my leader's down in the water. Albeit an inch or two, that helps pull that nose down. When I pull it, it goes bloop, bloop. And that's the bite they want today. That's what you got to figure out when you go fishing. Do they want that thing kind of walking back and forth, you know, making the, the little bubbles that it makes, or do they want that bloop sound? And a lot of times for me, I like that bloop sound. It's just, man, I catch a lot of fish doing that. Oh. Yes. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, it broke me off. No, no, no. No, 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 no. So, <laughs> I just broke one off. Yeah, that stinks. Uh, but it did tell me something. I'm working my bait way too fast. That fish, that it was sitting there. I was trying to do a talking point. Probably nothing important. <laughs> but my bait got ate. I set the hook and he swims over there into a uh, cattail clump. You also might notice I'm tying a different knot here because my leader is getting kind of short. So I'm tying a trilene knot just because I don't have a lot of line to work with. That's usually a bad scenario. I usually mess it up and then I end up needing to put a new leader on anyway. We'll see. It doesn't look good, guys. It'll work. It'll work till it breaks, right? All right. Oh, that one's lighter. I've been throwing the, the medium-sized popper, and uh, I didn't have another one. I got a bigger one and had a little one. I just decided to go with a little one because the water's so clear. You hear that sound that that's making? That has a lot of drawing power from a long distance. I've had a lot of success on this bait in the fall on lakes like Rayburn and Toledo Bend. I caught an eight pounder once on a little bitty popper on a Rayburn in a tournament. I mean, it is a fish catching dude. You know, the end of summer, the fall over grass, it just, it's got a big drawing power. little one. With that said though, heck I've caught them on this thing in the spring. You know, we've had lots of events on fork in the post spawn and, and right around the spawn. It's an awesome bait to throw early in the year too. You know, when you, when they just, you need something sitting there, but yet you've got to make a noise, you know, to draw them to it, you know, so clear water. He is a 
tiny looking fish. Look at that. He's got like all this body and then bam. I like I seen him come up underneath it right before that. <laughs> And I don't know, he went out of sight. I guess he went down to get a running start at it or something. Oh, gosh, dog it. Dang it. I was pulling a little hard. Dad gum it. Dang it. I got the good out of him. Gosh, that's a fun bite. That is so shallow up there. So I just moved inside from these reeds right up to the bank. That's my second cast up there. Thanks, buddy. He's got that thing sideways in his mouth. Short and fat. Short and fat. Thanks. Oh gosh. That is so hard to do. Not jerk when you get a bite. Well, that's not the same one, but I'll take him. I'll take him. Come here, buddy. Man, things are really calmed down out here. Winds quit blowing. Come here, buddy. Gosh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That is so much fun on a top water. I just don't, I just love it. I cannot get enough of that right there. Because it's a top water bite and it's just, you make that bloop, 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 and then bam, you get one. You know, it's just so calm, so clear. You know, a walking bait would be too much for him today, but that bait right there seems to be working. You'll note, oh gosh dang it. I let that bait sit there extra long because I noticed the cattails back here like five feet away, I, I noticed one of them move, and I was like, oh, something's coming. <laughs> That's why I let it sit there a little longer. I didn't get him. Another time that, that the popping bait is an advantage is, is when you're fishing it over submerged vegetation, you know, you get a little bit on your hooks, I can just pop it extra hard, it'll clean it off. With a walking bait, you know, you pop it extra hard, you've done moved it out of location to come cartwheeling out of there and you can't clean that grass off of it. So when I've got that scattered grass like I have right here, I also like using it just because I can clean it off. I can be more efficient when I'm up there fishing in that stuff. Gosh, that was a fun bite. Man, he, he come running out of that mat. Is he going to come out? That was the problem. Here he comes. Oh yeah. Look how clear that water is. <laughs> he has got a face full of that grass. Come here, buddy. Man, you hit it like you're a 10 pounder. You had high aspirations. You were letting everybody know you were coming. But that popper was yours. That's a fun bite. Fun bite. So if I had to pick, you know, two times of the year to throw this bait, it's gonna be post spawn right when those fish are up there guarding that fry, they're up there, you know, clear water, round docks, guarding that fry, that's when this bait really, really shines. Then the other is the end of summer, the start of fall. I don't know what it is about that time frame, you know, for the, the, the whole south, that's like end of September, October, you know, as you come north, you know, that stuff is a little bit sooner, but those are the two times that I throw this bait more than any other. I just, it really shines at those two times of the year. Just a natural thing. Have to be one. You got both hooks sideways. One thing to do on these baits to keep in mind, you've got to check your hooks. You know, for this popper to work, they've got really light wire hooks. I can't change them out and, and put heavier wire hooks on this, on this thing. So, you know, especially using braid, you're putting a lot of pressure on them. You know, I've got a couple of them just tweaked out a little bit. I just push them in there with my finger to keep those things in good working order. And after you've straightened them a few times, you know, go ahead and replace it, but don't put too heavy a wire hook on there.
Oh, that's a better fish, maybe. Oh yeah, that's a nicer one. And a jumper. Cool. Come here, buddy. That's so fun, so fun. I just love it. I love it, I love it. It's a cool fish. He's got all these little black specks. Anybody know what those are? Looks like eggs right there or something in his, huh. That's kind of cool. Thanks, bud. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a nice one. Yes, sir. Heck yes. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right. I love catching them. You know, when you think about colors on these things, I I promise you guys, if I had to choose one, it's always going to be a bluegill color, one like that. I just, I like, it's just, I got the most confidence. You know, I've thrown a popper a lot in my career, and that's the one that I seem to catch the most amount of fish on. But we'll kind of go through that here in a minute. I'll, I'll show you some different colors, but that's my favorite. Man, there's some fish right here. Oh, he just kind of slurped it. You know, a popper is a bait that is, is probably more limited, you know, for me than, than say my walking bait like, like that Jay Walker that I throw a bunch, you know, you know, a spook in general, that's the type of bait we all call it. Uh, but when it comes time to throw it, this outperforms everything else like five to one, you know, and those times, you know, I've talked about it in this video, post spawn when those fish are garden fry and, and, the, and the end of summer, the start of fall. When you go to choose your size, you know, there's lots of sizes out there. Uh, you know, in the lineup that I carry, I've got three different sizes. I got a 60, a 70, and an 80. So when I choose the side, I'm gonna choose the 60 in calmer conditions and clearer water. That's just a must because, you know, I, I just, I'm gonna have that smaller size in those calmer, cleaner conditions. I'm gonna go with that big size when I've got rougher water and I've got muddier water. That's when I go to that, that big size. You know, as far as colors, this is my all time favorite year round, you know, just a bluegill pattern. That, I just love that pattern. Uh, really, really important. It's important to have a good feather on the back too. When you stop it, you want that feather just to slowly open up and you pop it, it closes, and then it slowly opens up. That's a big key to these baits because so many of your strikes are when it's sitting. A couple other colors that I do carry, bone, you just don't go anywhere without bone, you know, if they're really keying in on shad. And then, you know, today I probably should have thrown this one. This is more of a transparent bluegill. When you hold that thing up to the light, you can see through it. Uh, this would have been a better color today. I don't know what I was thinking, why I didn't tie it on, but uh, probably would have closed the deal on a few more of those strikes with that color there. As uh, far as your setup, simple eight three to one gear ratio reel i throw it on 30 pound braid because you know the 60s a, a lighter bait um, remember this is one of the few times i'll use fluorocarbon it'll be a short liter of fluorocarbon but i like the fact that fluorocarbon drags that bait down just a little bit when i'm wanting to bloop it now if i'm walking a bait you know and i walk that big one a bunch when i'm walking that bait that's when i want it on monofilament say 14 17 pound monofilament on this one 14 pound fluorocarbon on this one 6.9 rod, medium action. That's it, guys. It's a fun bait to throw. Uh, don't forget about checking your hooks often. They got light wire hooks for a reason because the bait you know, can't hold up a big heavy wire hook. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Send me a comment. Tell me your favorite color. Tell me your favorite place to throw it or something I forgot because I know I did. I make mistakes all the time. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hey guys, if this channel's helping you, if you're learning anything from it, you know, be sure to hit that like button. I got a bunch of you guys watching it that's not subscribed and, uh, you know, tell somebody else about it. If it's helping you out, help another angler because that's something I enjoy doing, helping people fish. Got a lot of plans for it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of new stuff's going to be coming out, fishing with some other people. Uh, I'm going to start incorporating my son a bunch because he's starting to really like it. So I appreciate you guys watching.